You have the floor, honey. Thank you so much, Mr. President. And uh, it was a great honor and privilege to welcome you and to welcome Mr. Secretary General, as well as colleagues from 200 representatives from parliaments around the world uh, to join this important day in the margins of the COP26 meeting. The parliamentarians were unanimous in their adoption of the outcome document that you have heard described by our two excellent rapporteurs, Alex Sobel from the UK Parliament and Alessia Rota from the Italian Parliament. And they and so many of you have worked so hard and so effectively uh, in producing this document, which was uh, unanimously adopted by the gathering. We all know how important it is for us all to act together as parliamentarians across the world to combat climate change. We are the ones who will be holding our governments to account on those commitments that they made at COP26, those nationally determined contributions. And I thank all of you for delivering such big improvements in your contributions. These were important commitments by governments and it is we as parliamentarians who will scrutinise, who will hold these government commitments to account and who will legislate importantly for them to be put into practice. This is so important given the irreversible damage that climate change uh, will trigger. The document which was applauded by many other bodies demands that governments do not shirk their responsibility. They must adhere to their climate change objectives, the net zero by 2050 contained within the Paris Agreement, and the world's most important and legally binding uh, document. It demands that responsible stewardship of the planet and the well-being of humanity must be at the heart of all political ambition and activity. And it demands that developed countries must meet their existing climate commitments, in particular to provide and maintain a minimum $100 billion in climate financing annually. And this was announced at COP26, falling somewhat short, but still committing $500 billion over the next five years. And importantly, a very significant commitment in terms of the financial sector for $130 trillion, Mr. President, to be aligned with net zero, which is a massive uh, commitment from the world's global financial institutions. This transition to net zero will have profound implications for all of us. We as parliamentarians must scrutinize the challenges we face. There is hope in this endeavor. As we heard from the inspiring Sir David Attenborough, uh, the World Wildlife Fund ambassador, he said that in his lifetime, he has witnessed terrible decline. But in our lifetime, we can and we should witness a wonderful recovery. There is hope, parliamentarians. We must work together on these agreements. We must scrutinize and hold our governments to account on delivering their nationally determined contributions. As Mary Robinson, who graced our event with her presence on the 7th of November, she's the chair of elders. She said that legislatures and legislators can deliver significant progressive social and political change. And Mr. President, while the final Glasgow Climate Pact made very good progress, completing the Paris rule book and keeping the targets alive, there were also some disappointments which we must acknowledge, including a final watering down by some parties on the phasing out of the use of fossil fuels. COP27 next year in Egypt will be an opportunity to exert further pressure on governments to in, uh, achieve even greater results and action. In the meantime, we as parliamentarians have a lot of work to do if we are in to, in to ensure that the launch pad provided by Glasgow can propel us forward 
towards the urgent policy measures that we must take collectively, we must learn from each other, we must address the climate change crisis. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you so much.